Hello friend, Jim here with JB's Big Adventure, coming to you from Lake Chapala, Mexico. And today, this is a very, very important video. And there's several important parts to it because this is all about the RFC. What is it? What does it do? Do you have to get it? Where do you get it? What's the process? So there's a lot of things. And I've got an expert with me today that we're gonna be sharing with you. But before we get to that, if you haven't already, I'd like to encourage you to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It's a great community. I know that you want to be a part of it. I would just ask that you go ahead and go to the bottom right hand side. There's a red box. Tap on it. You're subscribed and you'll know when each one of our new videos come out. Also, give us a thumbs up. That lets people know it's a great video to watch about retiring to Lake Chapala, Mexico. OK, so with me, I have got Ricardo Rosas. And Ricardo, thank you again for getting together with us. I really appreciate you. Thank you. And, uh, and uh, you taking the time, because I know you're really busy and everything, but I really appreciate you being willing to sit down and share this with, with our viewers of what's going on here. Thanks, Jim, for inviting so, me. So the, the RFC um, is, stands for Registrizo Federal de Contribuyentes. That's right. That's right. And just uh, keep it simple, it's just a tax ID that is, uh, you only have to get it once and that same number will remain with you your whole life that you're uh, in Mexico, uh, it, it never will change. But the first time you have to set it up uh, with the tax authorities, it, 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 it will not be not valid if it's on the insurance paper or if it's in another paper that is not related to tax. The thing is that it has to be from the tax authorities to, to, so it will be valid. Okay. Okay, and with that, I've had folks saying that, you know, they're in their 70s and they're not going to be getting a job and they're not buying a house, they're not going to buy a car, uh, they don't have a job. Um, all the things to say, well, why would I need it? Because I'm in my 70s. So why is it that the Mexican government is requiring everyone above age 18? Is that correct? And why is that? Yes, uh, basically the government wants to have a, a little bit more overview of what's going on in the country. Everyone that is over 18 should have an RFC, not because they want to taxate them or the, they want to, that the 18 year old will pay taxes. It's just to have a register and just to have information of what people are doing regarding taxes and everybody ch will chip in to, to create a better country. So everybody together we can create better opportunities in the country, and that's one of the things that the, the government wants to have that scope. Uh, and just the, that includes also the temporal and permanent residents that are living in our beloved Mexico. Yeah, and I, I wanted to bring that up. So if you've got a temporal or a permanente, you're considered to be a resident, and as long as you're over age 18, you've got to have a RFC number. That's right, and it's not only for purchasing things. I mean, even if you have an insurance here in Mexico and you want to claim uh, uh, maybe you had a car accident or just, uh, an event with, uh, with insurance, in order to just to do the claim, you will need your RFC number. So it's not just by, so you're buying a car or you're buying a house. There are several things that you can do with your RFC number. Just remember that you have to set it up the correct way if you're an expat and you're retired, there's no tax obligation, so it's just your tax ID number, it will be helpful for you, and it will not be something that you have to worry about in, in, in the near future. Okay, and I know that uh, Barbara and I had first heard about this RFC thing about two months ago, and we also found out that there was a deadline as of July 1st, which is today. And as you can well understand, the Mexican government and the officials had no idea what this undertaking was going to be to get everybody an RFC number by the beginning of July. Yeah, that's right. I mean, just uh, this new mandate was, uh, due, uh, was in place January 1st of this year, but there was no promotion, no, 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 no visibility for many of the Mexicans. So then as we approach July 1st, people start getting worried and just offices were packed and they, they were not planning on this. So they were requiring July 1st as a deadline, but there was no planning ahead just to 
fill all the gap because there are millions of Mexicans that they didn't have their RFC number. So that's one of the reasons they had to extend the period until January 1st. So we have a couple of months extra. That doesn't mean that we, we have to sit and just wait for things to happen. My recommendation is just uh, do it uh, uh, with several months ahead. So when November, December comes, you will not have to be in an office that is packed with people just trying to get it at the, at the very last minute. Yeah, and, and I think that's one of the things a lot of folks thought, and that is, what happens to us if in fact we don't get the RFC by July the 1st? So in doing some study and some research, I found out, and I, I confirmed this with Ricardo also, and that is the Mexican government has actually extended the requirement of getting an RFC by January the 1st. Now, here's the thing. I know that if you went online, went through all the steps, which is like 10, 11, 12 steps to go through, if you went through all of those online and you got finished to it, you're basically put into a virtual standing line, a virtual line. And we were told from somebody here just a couple of weeks ago that they were actually number 4,000 in the virtual line. Now, again, this is going into this office. So this isn't just one person. This is something that's happening a lot. And so, but, the, but you told me in all actuality, how many are there that are in line right now? Around 4,000 in one of the offices. Uh, in other offices, they were last month around 10,000 on the waiting list. So just it's too many people just waiting for the RFC number. For different reasons, they might get it for buying a car, buying a house, getting for uh, getting their, their salary from their employees. Uh, so there are many, many situations that they need the RFC. So offices are packed, they are not getting uh, the numbers and they will not reach the goal by January, uh, by July 1st. So they are just uh, saying, okay, we will g give a, an extra time. So January 1st is the new deadline. But the process for the virtual line waiting list is just a, uh, it will take a couple of months just to get it. And the, the thing that we have right now is just people over 60 years old, they have an opportunity, like a senior's benefit. If you are over 60, then they can give you a waiver and you can go to the offices and do the process instead of going to the virtual line and do this step-by-step -step process that is just will be several months just to complete. Right, and um, so as you heard, as he said, it's for seniors 60 and above, you are able to not have to go online and get, get in line there. That's right. Now, this is something that's really important that I want to make sure our viewers understand. And that is when you've taken individuals down, there has been packed people in line waiting to be able to get served. But because Ricardo has been doing this for a good while. He's able to get you through quicker. That's right, I mean, just, they, they have this process that uh, all the seniors, they have the chance to go first. They don't have to get in line behind the other people that they're waiting for the RFC or any other uh, paperwork that they are doing. So they go right away, and yes, the waiting times might be one or two hours, but it's not like you're in the sun, you are not outside without uh, any protection or any, any, uh, anyone just telling you to what's going on. You will be on, so inside the office, just waiting for your turn to come up on the screens, and then just, it's just, uh, you go with the flow. I mean, right. just, uh, it's like, is, is nothing to be worried about. Just uh, if you have time to be seated and be patient, I mean, it's the only thing that we need. Well, so I just want to really, I guess, urge those that are also here in Mexico already, if you're eight, over the age of 60. Now, if you're planning on moving here already, you're planning on getting into town, Ricardo knows exactly how to do this, where to go, who the people are to talk to, what steps need to be done. He picks you up at your house or your business or wherever you, he's going to pick you up at, takes you to Guadalajara. So he's picking you up, driving an hour into Guadalajara to the building, parking, getting inside, getting you 
to the line of where you need to be so you can get to, through as quick as possible. And he gets through once you're done, and then he brings you back to Lake Chapala. And he does all of this for only 2,000 pesos. That's right. I mean, just the, even the, the ride to Chapala, uh, Chapala, Guadalajara, sometimes takes an hour, an hour and a half and it will be no less than 1,000 pesos. So it just it's something that it will take time and it will take uh, some experience from myself just to assist you. So I, I will help you just to be not so stressed about the situation. At the end, we, you will have your, your RFC number and you will be ready to go and you don't have to worry, thing, uh, worry about anything else. Just have to your RFC on a safe place and your documentation and that's it. Wow. To see what people need. Okay, so I just want to really stress something here, and this is really, it's really, really important. As you know, Barbara and I have been to Guadalajara. The majority of folks, I don't think I've talked to one person that says they hate driving to Guadalajara. I have no problem being from Southern California, that's traffic. But it's the fact of getting picked up, it's, it's the hour ride, he's getting you to exactly where you want to go, he already has the paperwork that you're going to need. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to, in description, we're going to give you a link to get your print out of your CURP number, which is what you were given when you got your immigration status. Is that correct? That's right. And the number, and you also need to make sure you've got your visa card. So what are the things that they need to make sure they have a hold of? Just uh, basically your CURP number, that is the one that is given on your temporary or permanent card. And there's, a, as you mentioned, there's a link that you can just type your curve number and it will show a PDF format so you can print that out. Your proof of address, le no less than 90 days old because if it's older than that, uh, you have to get a newer one. But it can be your Telmex bill, CFE bill, monthly bank statement, internet bill. So those options are available. Even if you have another that you, you think that is a proof of address, just contact me and I can make sure that if it is or not. Uh, just another thing that you will need is your temporal card or your permanent card. And that's it. I mean, just the, the other thing is that if you're going to get the encrypted password from the tax authorities, you will need a flash drive. It doesn't matter which capacity you have the flash drive but you will have to have a new flash drive in order to get the encrypted password. But that depends for the authorities to let you know if you are allowed to have it or not. It doesn't depend about me, but it's good to have it. So when you're picking them up and taking them down, they should have an empty flash drive. Yes, that's right. Just in case that they request the, this empty flash drive to get you your encrypted password. So you are just set to go and there's no delays on there on the process. So let me ask you this, where here at Lake Chapala is probably the fastest, easiest place to get a flash drive? Well, in, in any convenience store like OXO, if you are familiar to Mexico, OXO is one of the biggest convenience stores and almost you can find here in Lakeside like three or four in different places. But if you go to Guadalajara, almost in every corner there is an OXO. You can find it at Walmart or Staten. I mean, there, there's a lot of options. And the price will be 100, 150 pesos, no more than that. Okay, so that will be, so the important things you need is going to be your, your CURP, you'll download your CURP information, the printout. Yes. You're going to have your temporal or your visa, and you will have the empty flash drive. And your proof of address. And your proof of address yes. also. So when Ricardo and I got talking about this, I thought, wow and for 2,000 pesos, and he does all of that for you. So that's an incredible bargain. And the fact that he's really busy and was able to take some time with us, but he's already let us know that if folks are calling him, he's gonna make sure to field those calls so he can also help you as quick as he can to help you get your RFC number. So um, again, the, the, la the, the deadline day is January the 1st, 2023. But folks do not want to wait until then. You want to do it now so that line doesn't get even larger that's, and not be able to get in. That's right, because uh, uh, just in Mexico, it's very common that we, we leave the things to the last minute. So you can bet that in November, December of this year, offices will be crowded again. So just if you have time on this month, July, August, September, you can do it. I mean, it will be easier for you. 
and you don't have to worry about this anymore. I mean, you will have it ready, and if you require it for any given reason, you will have Good deal. Well, there you go. The, uh, the skinny on or, or the information of, about the RFC. And before we go, if you have not already, I'd like to encourage you to subscribe to the channel. It's a great community, and I know you'll be a part of it. You're going to have all kinds of videos, just like this RFC video. We're talking to immigration attorneys. All of that kind of thing, all those kind of videos are done on our uh, YouTube channel. Also, give us a thumbs up that lets other people know it's a great video to see. And you'll also want to make sure if you stop by, say hi, ask a question, tell us about a video you'd like to see. And then lastly, make sure you hit the bell because that way you will be immediately notified when a, a new video comes out. So with that, thank you again, Ricardo, thank for being you. here. Really appreciate it. Have an awesome day, and we'll see you Take on care. the next video.